What's up, buds? It's your Bud Bolt. Today we're going to be talking about the basic rules of hockey. So today we're going to be covering zones, icing, offsides, lining up for faceoffs, the goalie crease, the ref circle, and the basics of penalties. So when we're talking about zones, these are all based off of the blue lines. So the green team's defensive zone will be from the blue line all the way to the end of the ice where their goalie is. The neutral zone for both teams will be between the two blue lines at center ice. And then the attacking zone for the green team will be between the other blue line and the other side of the ice where the other team's goalie is standing. Now for the black team, this will be in reverse. From the blue line to where the end of the ice where their goalie is standing, it is going to be their defensive zone. The neutral zone stays the same, and then the green team's defensive zone is the black team's attacking zone. So zones are pretty important to the game of hockey because so many things depend on them and depend on you knowing them. So a breakout and a forecheck are all things we are going to get to um, that require zones, but also the basic rules require zones. So offsides is one of those rules that we will talk about today that is very zone heavy and depends on um, knowing your zones. So now that we know our zones, we are going to move on to what icing is. So icing, well, it is a rule that uh, will send the puck back to your zone. It can be helpful, especially when it comes to changing. So sometimes it's hard to change on the fly and not leave your goalie stranded. So you can ice the puck in order to cause a whistle for play to get blown down and to be able to make a good line change. So icing happens when the puck is behind the red line completely towards your defensive zone and one of your players shoot it down beyond the other team's goal line in your attacking zone, then it is considered an icing call and is blown down. So the puck needs to be entirely behind the red line and needs to go entirely past the opposing team's goal line. Now in some leagues, the other team needs to touch the puck behind that goal line in order for it to be considered an icing but most Canadian leagues, it just needs to pass the other team's goal line. And here's the kicker. It needs to do it without the other team being able to play it. So the only time you'll get an icing call uh, is if the other team does not have the ability to play the puck. Icing will be waved off if the other team has the ability to play the puck and does not. Now, when the play is blown down for icing, the face-off is going to happen all the way back at the defensive zone of the team who iced the puck on the side where the puck was iced. So the ice rink is divided right down the middle, um, and it's going to split it into two sides. So if it's on the right side, it's going to come back to the right side face-off circle. If it's on the left side, it's going to come back to the left side face-off circle. So when it comes to offsides, it's entirely based on the blue line. When it comes to your team being offsides, it's based on your attacking zone blue line. So the blue line that leads into your attacking zone between the, the, the attacking zone and the neutral zone. So the way offsides work is when a player is beyond that blue line, completely on the other side of that blue line, before the puck is. When I say completely, that's defined by having both skates on the other side of the blue line with white ice between the skate and the line. So it needs to be completely over, which means you can be offside by a single skate, but you can't be offside by both, which is why you'll see a lot of more advanced players drag their back foot if they notice they're about to go offside, and so that there's a little bit of delay between when their back foot actually does step out offside in order to stop that. So if a player's both skates are completely on the other side of the blue line, before the puck is and the puck enters the zone, it will be a delayed offside. A delayed offside means you can leave the puck and go and, and what we call tag up, which means everybody from your team needs to be back on the other side of the blue line with white ice between their skates and the line 
before they can go back in and touch the play the puck that is delayed offside. And you'll know there's a delayed offside because the referee will have their hands straight up in the air and will be yelling offside. So if you see a ref with their hand up in the air yelling offside and you are in the attacking zone, you know that you need to get yourself behind that blue line. Now if you do step off sides, don't worry, it's not a huge deal. It happens quite a bit during the game. Um, and for the most part, nobody should be getting mad at you for stepping offside unless you knew what you were doing. There are occasions where um, if it's a delayed offside and you might not hear it and you touch the puck, the play goes all the way down to the other end. Um, and that rule is, uh, is used, you know, probably not as much in rec leagues and less with beginners who aren't really sure what they're doing, but it is a rule. And just don't feel discouraged by that. It happens to the best of us. We all step off sides. You'll probably see the very best player on your team step off sides. I'm going to say at least, at least five times during a season. So it's not a big deal, especially while you're learning. But just be aware of the rule. And once again, be careful while making passes when you're coming in along the blue line. So when you get there, just be confident. And if you're not confident, you can always dump it in the other end. So before you even cross the line, you can just shoot the puck right down into the other team's um, corner below the goal line. You can take a shot on goal, whatever. You can do what you want. Just, just don't panic when it comes. Just make an informed decision. If you've got ice to skate, skate with it up. Cross the blue line entirely and look for the pass or the shot. So much of this game is literally just trying not to panic and trying to make good decisions in split seconds. Um, panicking is one of the main reasons why people make mistakes in this game because everything is happening so quickly. But it's a really good exercise in getting your brain to work things out and to see things in split seconds and make split second decisions. And the more you work on it, the better the decisions you're going to make in the game and the better the better equipped you're going to be for even those situations out in the real world. So if everybody's on the right side of the blue line, they have not crossed over that boundary into the attacking zone yet, and the puck goes in, nobody is offside, game continues as normal, you're all good. Also, if it is the other team that puts the puck back into their defensive end, it doesn't matter if anybody is offside because that was their team that put it in, um, and so there's no offsides issued. So if you remember none of this, if none of that made any sense to you, here is the absolute simplistic version of that. The puck needs to be the first thing to completely cross the defensive zone blue line. You and your teammates need to be the second thing after the puck. So if you're carrying the puck, that puck needs to be across that defensive zone blue line a split second even before both of you or your teammates' skates are. So that face-off, when play is blown dead because of the offside, is going to come back to just outside the blue line on the same side of the ice. So that face-off dot that's just outside the blue line is going to be right where that face-off is, and that goes for anywhere on the ice. So if you're in the attacking zone, it's on the right-hand side, it's going to happen on the right-hand uh, face-off dot, in the neutral zone just outside of your attacking blue line. If you're in your defensive zone on the left side, it's gonna come to the left side face-off dot just outside the blue line of your defensive zone. So let's talk about lining up for face-offs. So the center will always be taking the face-off, be face-to-face -face with the other team's center, and the puck is gonna drop between them. So if there is a dot, the center is always standing right in front of that dot. Now, the right wing will be standing on the right side of the ice, facing the other goalie. So the right side, when you're facing the other goalie, outside of the circle and on your team's defensive side of any kind of lines or hashes. The left wing will be the same on the left side, and then the two defense will be behind them, usually between them. Now, this pattern pretty much repeats almost anywhere you are on the ice except for your defensive zone. That's when things get a little bit funny and different teams will have different strategies on where to put people, but there is a basic kind of um, setup that happens. Now the other team should have a similar setup, so if you can pretty easily identify 
who's playing your position on the other team, you should be able to figure out where you're supposed to stand. If you're really lost, just ask somebody on your team. They'll give you a hand with that. So when it comes to lining up in the defensive zone, like I mentioned, this is the one place where it is different. So if you are in the zone with your goalie, it's going to look something like this. The center is going to be set up like normal. The wing, whoever's board we are against, is going to be set up as regular. So in this case, it's the left wing. It'd still be in the left wing spot. And then on the right side, the defense is going to be standing in front of the right winger. So the defense is going to take the right winger spot, and the right winger is going to line up behind the right defenseman. Now the left defenseman is going to be along the bottom of the circle, and this is up to you where you would like to stand along the bottom of the circle, but you're going to be between the left winger and the right D, and you need to make sure that the goalie can see. So do not stand in the path between the right defenseman and the goalie's line of sight. So make sure, you know, you're checking to make sure your goalie can see the face off. Now in some systems, they might want the left defenseman up at this hash and the left winger down below. So just if you're unsure, uh, check with people. And if this is your first game, just, you know, follow whoever's on the ice with you and you can always ask on the bench afterwards. If this is your attacking zone, it's going to look almost the same as center ice, except you're going to want the left D to be a little bit higher than the right D, and the right D is going to pinch down a little bit just to provide a little bit of coverage along those boards. So the other thing we need to talk about when it comes to face-offs is called encroachment. Now there are these markings on the ice and the circles that are actually positioning for face-offs. If you're in violation of these, so if you're crossing a line, you shouldn't, um, the ref will more than likely let you know if you've got a ref that understands that they're refing beginners. Um, you'll get a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right there, 18 black. Um, and they'll direct the sticks and skates of the centers. But um, after a little while, they might decide that, you know what, you're not listening. This is taking too long. And what they'll do is they'll throw a center out. Um, this happens, it's not a huge deal, it just means that the center can no longer take the face off and usually a winger will take their place. Um, so if the, you're taking a face off your center and the ref mentions, hey, you know, 14 white, um, get out of here, um, for the most part they mean just, just leave the, the face off circle, take the place of one of your wingers, and one of your wingers is going to take the face off. So to not encroach on things, it's pretty simple. If you're the center, make sure your skates aren't on either side of these hash marks. So there's the two little hash marks are telling you, they're like batter's boxes, exactly where your skates should be. Um, if you're a winger, you should be outside of the circle on your side of your hash mark. So your side is always towards your defensive zone. Um, so don't put your skates into the circle or on the other side of that hash mark, um, the other player should be marking up. Should the other player should be lining up on their side of the hash mark. And general rule of thumb: if there is a circle, nobody but the center of each team and the referee should be inside of that circle. So when we're lining up at the face-off dot uh, outside of the blue line, usually for an icing, it looks almost the exact same as center ice, if not the exact same. Um, and this is just, that's all you need to do. So really, if you, if you remember this pattern, if you remember if you're a right winger where to stand, you should be pretty good for most of the game. If you need some guidance in the defensive zone, you can always just ask your buddies to tell you where to stand. So this is the goal crease. This is the goalie's domain, and this is kind of like their safety net. They're going to be down on their bellies, they're going to be on their sides. Uh, it's a very vulnerable place for goalies to be, and they're going to be trying to be make saves. So the one absolute rule is no skates inside of the crease. So you do not put your skates in the crease. Um, different leagues have different rules about when skates are allowed in the crease, but if you want to play it safe, just don't put your skates in the crease. And please be careful with your stick around goalies, you know, um, keep it generally away from the crease. If you see a loose puck, that's one thing, but if the goalie's got it covered, don't be giving them hacks and slashes. The other crease-like thing on the ice is called the ref circle. Now this is where refs will go and have a chat with each other uh, and talk to the scorekeeper and timekeeper. 
So this is an area that when a ref is inside of it and play is stopped, players do not enter for any reason. So even if you're a captain or an assistant, you're going to stand outside of the circle and you're going to wait for the refs to do what they need to do before you ask questions or before they let you know what's going on. So do not step inside the circle if play is dead and a ref is standing in it. So the last thing that we're going to talk about as far as rules go is uh, where the bench is and where the uh, boxes are. So your bench will more than likely be inside the blue line or straddling the blue line a little bit of your defensive zone and your box will either be next to your bench inside the neutral zone or on the other side of the ice. Occasionally they are on the other side of the ice. So with the benches, when the sides switch, you need to be careful of hopping offside because uh, your bench is going to be right in your attacking zone. Now, here's what you need to know as a basic beginner when it comes to penalties. You get one, you go to the box. Don't ask questions on the ice, just go to the box. Even if you don't think you did anything wrong, just go to the box, ask questions later, um, ask your teammates after the game, um, if the, the refs are approachable and respectful and generally cool refs who know they're playing, they're refing a beginner's game, um, they'll be pretty cool with you asking like, okay, like what could I have done differently there to not get a penalty? So just it, on the ice, in the heat of the moment, the only thing you need to remember about penalties is if they call your name or your number and your team, you go right to the box, you don't say anything, you just sit in the box for the allotted amount of time. Now, if you do get a penalty, sit in the box and you wait until the time of the clock runs out. When the time of the clock has reached about 20 seconds left, you want to make sure you're checking with your team whether they want you to come to the bench or go to the ice. So just somehow communicate with your team. If you're in a box on the far side of the rink, just hop on the ice and play like regular until um, there's a way to get back to the bench and get off the ice. So you don't want to be leaving your team in a lurch, you know, even though they just had a two minute penalty, you don't want to make it two minutes and 20 seconds. So hop on the ice and play. If the if the box is right next to the bench, you, you can usually just lean over and be like, hey, like, where do you want me? Um, and if they tell you the bench, just go right to the bench afterwards. There are occasions if there's too many men on the ice, somebody from the ice usually needs to serve that penalty. Or if somebody does get kicked out of a game, um, there's usually a penalty that needs to be served by somebody who was on the ice at the time. You might be picked for that. Don't, you know, take that to heart. It's just because there's only four people who are available to do it and you happen to pick the short straw for that. Um, so just go, you serve your penalty as normal. Uh, there are cases of, of canceling penalties. Uh, if that's the case, the ref should let you know what's going on. And uh, if it's a canceled out penalty, you'll have to wait um, until play is dead in order to get out of the box. And you'll usually be able to tell if your pe penalty is cancelled out because somebody from the other team has a penalty of the exact same length they got at the exact same time and they're still playing 5 on 5 instead of 4 on 4.